Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to plant up some recipes that I found on the Proven Winners website, but I have a little twist. For each recipe, I'm gonna cheat a little because I don't have every single Proven Winners plant, and sometimes there's other varieties that I just might like a little better. So that's what I'm gonna to do today, and I'm gonna talk you through if you're gonna substitute uh, plants from a recipe that you find from someplace else, especially from the Proven Winners website, there's some things you really need to consider. If you're on the Proven Winners website and you start searching those recipes, I want you to be very aware that the photographs that they have are there for inspiration only. They have been doctored and adjusted a little bit so that they look their best and they give you an idea of how the colors look together and how the textures look, but chances are your plants are never going to grow the way that they show in those photos. Uh, in fact, some of them, if you keep looking at enough of those photos, uh, different ones enough, you'll start finding that there's little elements of plants that appear in several different recipes. So they're using kind of pieces of images and, and photoshopping them in a little bit. I don't hold that against them though, because ultimately they want you to be able to imagine what they're gonna be like and then plant up according to that. But if you think that your uh, planters are gonna look exactly like the Proven Winners pictures, well, good luck. So when choosing the planters, I had done a little survey in the YouTube community and on Facebook where I showed four recipes and I asked people to vote. Well, there were two clear winners, so I'm going to plant those up for you. And then there were the other two that kind of were neck and neck way down at the bottom. I think what I'm going to do, because there's some plants in there that I really want to try out, I'm going to merge the two together and kind of come up with a hybrid of that recipe as well. And then I found another one that I just absolutely want to plant up because I think it's going to be beautiful. So I'm just, you know, once I start, I just can't stop. So let's just get planting right away. In their recipes, they do recommend a pot size. So a lot of them are 14 inches or 16 inches. Be really aware of the fact that uh, your plants and the recipes can adapt to different sizes. So you're not locked into that size. But remember, if you have a 14 inch pot, there's a big difference between a very shallow pot and a very deep pot. So I want you to consider that if you have a shallow pot and you have really vigorous plants, you might have a hard time watering or they might not do as well. Whereas if you have a deeper pot, that's going to be really, really good for your plants. So let's get planting on the first one. The big winner out of my little survey was one called Monarch Butterfly, and it has some beautiful plants in it. So let's plant that one up and we'll talk about it. So Monarch Butterfly has some beautiful orange tones. So it's got the Calibrecoa, the Super Bells Dreamsicle, which is a beautiful orange. It's one of the nicest orange Calibrecoas out there. And then these are the Super Bells Double Yellow. Uh, we don't have any flowers on them right now, but uh, you can see they're loaded with flowers. Beautiful roughly double on that one. So what we do with this, and they tell you right here in the recipe, basically you do four corners with this. And then in the middle, you put, well, they would use a luscious, uh, red, let's see, what's it called? Luscious Royale Red Zone Lantana, but I don't have that one. But I do have the Bandalista Red Chili, and I saw these growing side by side in the Michigan State Trial Gardens and a couple other places, and their growth habit is very, very similar. So I look at the Luscious Royale Red Zone, and their growth is 12 to 26 inches. When I look at this one, it says its spacing is 24 to 30. So Ultimately, I think they're going to be very, very similar. And in fact, I know it because I've seen them. Uh, and when I saw them in the trial gardens, they looked very, very similar. So uh, when I did see them, the Luscious series, they weren't blooming quite as much as the Bandalista series at that time. And I don't know if that was just a matter of timing or if there was more to that. Like if, if the band, Bandalistas just bloom more, I'm, I'm not going to jump to that conclusion. But they looked really good side by side. In fact, I think you could probably almost interchange them and they would they would still, you know, they'd look really good together. So I'm gonna put my center one in first. I have way too much soil in here, so let's take some out. Okay, so I'm gonna put in these and I'm gonna have them opposite each other. So on one side, I will be putting a dreamsicle. And then on the other side, I'll put another one. And like I said, I am going to be planting up two of these because I always like to have two because a lot of times people like to have one on each side of the porch or something like that. But because of my daylight running out, I'm going to only plant one up for you right now. But that I should be able to have the other one look exactly the same. 24 hours or less shouldn't make too much of a difference. So I'm just going to pop these in. And like I said, when you're 
substituting will say, you do have to remember that a lot of the proven winners varieties are more vigorous than average. So if you have a recipe that has like, let's say the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum, which is that really famous light pink uh, petunia, that is one of the most vigorous petunias out there. And you do need to be careful because you can't just grab any pink petunia and expect it to perform as well. If you use like one of those little six pack or four pack ones, a lot of times, uh, unless it's like a wave or a more vigorous variety, you're going to end up with, you know, a little eight inch petunia and you're envisioning something that's going to go over the edge. And if I had put something like that in with say a really vigorous lantana, that lantana could just swallow it right up. So be really careful about that. Let's get the rest of the soil in. Um, we're almost there. So I'll tidy these up a little bit later too. So I'm going to just try to get them in, but this is, they recommend a 12 inch pot for this. I went 14 because I know that, uh, that uh, Lantana is pretty vigorous. These caliber Koas, although they don't get as big as some of the big petunias and as big as that Lantana. And that's why the Lantana is in the center because it is the biggest one. It's going to trail out anyway. So you're going to be in good shape with that. Um, but I know that these do a great job of going over the edge. So by having them on the edges, they're going to just do their thing. Now, because we're early in the season, I normally would probably trim these back just a little bit just to give them that chance to kind of fill in really nice. But hey, who wants to get rid of flowers right now, right? So I don't want you to miss out on the chance to see those flowers. So these are all planted up. What I generally do is I grab my tags and then I will put them in my pot. So that way later on in the season, I can always check or if um, someone else is looking at these pots, they'll be able to also know. And then also at the end of the season when they're all dead uh, and I empty out the pots, I'll be like, oh, that was the one I had that in. Because a lot of times, especially if you're using this like as a liner pot, like sometimes I'll take this, I'll put it inside a ceramic pot or something if it fits right. And I want to make sure that I remember, you know, which one was the one that we put in the red pot because the red pot's that weird size or something like that. So this one's all set to go. I'll give it a little bit of water. It'll be beautiful. Let me see. The next one I want to do is for shade. And I think that's part of the reason why this one rose to the top, because it sounds like a lot of people are looking for things for shade. So I need to kind of put some focus on shade plants for you guys, because I think there's a lot of interest in that. So let me get some sh uh, ingredients for this one out. This recipe is significant because it can pretty much handle full shade, even though the tag on the sweet potato vine or Ipomia says that it's full sun to part sun. These tend to do pretty well, even in a full shade situation. They might not get quite as big, but they're pretty reliable in low light conditions. And I have to substitute three out of the four plants on this because I don't have them all. So I do have the uh, Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Jet Black Sweet Potato Vine. And then they recommend the Color Blaze Newly Noir, which is their very dark and black type of uh, coleus. And it's a very vigorous variety. Most of those color blaze varieties are like 36 to 40 inches. So when you're looking for a, re a substitution for that, think about it. But that actually is very, very large. Uh, sometimes that's bigger than what people even want. So that's something to consider. This one here is from the Volcanica series and it's called Vino. And its sizing is 18 to 30. And when I've seen it in the trial gardens, it's consistently at that two foot mark, which is going to be very good for this pot, you know, getting up to about here. Uh, it will get even bigger than that towards the end of the season, but in the beginning of the season, it'll look great. So I know based on how they're doing this, they're saying, oh, they're saying the jet black goes here. And then they recommend the Pegasus begonia, which is this beautiful uh, foliage based one. This is actually the Griffin, which I think are very, very similar. So the size of this one says 14 to 18. Theirs gets 12 to 18. So I think they're almost identical. So we're going to put this one here. And then we have two Terenia, and I don't have the Proven Winners variety, which is the Catalina Pink. That one gets 8 to 12 inches. This one here gets... The height is six to eight and up to 20 inches because this is a really trailing variety. And so then we pop that over here. So overall, this is one that's going to kind of spin. This one trails over the edge. So that's exactly what I want. So does this one. This one kind of gives us kind of some fullness. So in a way, you'd be able to either have it so that this big coleus is facing maybe the garage or you have this big griffin begonia facing outward. I, I probably would be facing the griffin outward. I don't know. If the thing about this is this is one that I think you can enjoy from all directions. So let's get these in here. I'm going to start with my bigger one. 
And also when they're putting these into their recipes, they're considering you, that you're having, starting with maybe more this size of container. We put some of these vigorous varieties of coleus in bigger containers because by the time we get into the end of May, a lot of times it's hard for us to keep them watered. And also we want people to like see that larger size and realize, oh, that's a vigorous variety. I'm gonna need to give that some space. Cause a lot of times people see these little tiny cups and they don't see the difference between the less vigorous and the more vigorous varieties. So I like to offer that to them. So let's get these in there. So usually when I'm digging my next hole, I kind of pat, backfill the other hole. So that way it makes it a little easier later on. So, and then when I'm emptying them, I usually do a little pinch. And these are just rice hulls that are falling out of here. We use that as kind of a mulch with our plants. So, so this one, not quite as deeply rooted at this point, which is fine. Um, but I am going to keep an eye on it because I don't want these more vigorous plants to overtake it at this point. Um, so this one might be a little early for us to kind of be planting out. Uh, our intention would be to plant, be selling this starting in about two weeks or so, but I think it's going to be okay. And that's one thing. Sometimes the shade plants, they will grow a little bit slower. At least that's what we find with a lot of them. So we have to watch them a little closer. Uh, so that's one thing. And then these two, let's backfill that one and that one. This one should be well rooted. Yep. So I'm just going to pop it right over here. And then this one. And I do really love this begonia. It's very, very huge. Like it's going to take a little while to get up to size, but it's a beautiful one when it's going. So again, this one's not fully rooted down there. But when I pick my begonias, I usually look to see how many baby leaves are in there. And the more leaves, the more excited I get, because I know that it, if it's producing that many leaves, it's probably ready to kind of do well. It's going to, you know, we're not worried about at that point, like it rotting, because sometimes with begonias, if they're too wet and they're not rooting properly, they'll get some root disease and they'll kind of rot off. But once you see all that new growth, that's usually a really good sign that you got a great begonia. And this is one that because it's going to be in the shade, it's probably not going to need as much water if you have it in shade. The good news is that uh, these two could take part sun, so you, well, actually more part shade, so it could get a little bit of light. You're going to be fine. Uh, so let me just double check my tags here. So the Griffin is a part shade to shade, and the Terenia is part shade as well. So it sh they should do just fine in shade or part shade. Uh, so you want them, they usually like about three hours of sunlight then. And they will not like that bright afternoon sun. So you don't want these in afternoon sun at all. They're not going to do so well in that kind of environment. Now, when I look at how they did it, they don't put like something in the center. So I think that's something that people are very used to. There being a thriller in the center. Well, I think ultimately this coleus is our thriller. Uh, but the size of this griffin begonia or their pegasus gets very, very large as well. So that can be a showpiece in and of itself. I'm not too worried about that. Um, so I think this is going to be an interesting one. My plan is to plant these up. We're going to take care of them. And then maybe I can show you guys an update maybe at the end of June. I have a feeling they'll be looking pretty good then. Um, and then at that point, we probably will put them out for sale. Or maybe they might go to my house. We'll see. Uh, although I have so many planters already. So that's all right now. That's all I'm doing. Putting them. I have these a little fuller than I normally would. I like to usually have at least a good inch and a half across the rim. Now, one thing I will say with shade planters as well, I tend to uh, avoid planters that are really, really deep with shade because I tend to overwater them. And if they're really deep like that, then they're really holding on to a lot more moisture as well. So just keep that in mind. If you have a really deep uh, container, you, you might be more prone to overwater. If you're like me, you would be. So this one's all set. So this is, you know, we've got this coleus here, the two terenias. So that's going to overflow, but it might work its way through. The sweet potato vine has a tendency to just work its way around. It's going to go over the edge, but chances are, if you kind of train it a little, you could have it coming out on any side. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I think this is going to be a beautiful shade one. The flowers on the terenia are relatively small, but the one that they recommend and the one that I chose has a little bit more contrast, has a little bit of white, and it has that pretty kind of pink raspberry kind of color in it, which I think is going to look 
quite nice. But otherwise, you're just relying on beautiful foliage for this uh, container. And I think you definitely get it. So this is going to be a really nice one. So let's see what we can do for the next container. So for this next one, I'm combining one that was called Light It Up that had the Hoopla Vivid Orchid, which I definitely wanted to use. And it had the Senecio Angel Wings, which I think is an absolutely beautiful plant. And this is the real reason why I was so drawn to Light It Up. And it's starting to rain a little, quite a bit heavier now, so I'm not sure what you can hear or not, but hopefully it's not annoying you too much. And then they would have put it with a Jazzberry Supertunia, but instead, I keep looking over here at the Hold Me Tight, and the Hold Me Tight had some Cobalt Blue Verbena, Superbena, and then also the, uh, the Supertunia Mini Vista White. And I love the idea of that Hoopla Orchid with the white and with the Senecio. So that's what I'm gonna put it with. I think it's gonna be a beautiful combination. So uh, I'm switching it up a little. So this one, this is not the proven winner's version of the Senecio Angel Wings. But since it has the exact same name, I have a feeling that that's just a branding type of thing. So if you buy it with the white pot with the Proven Winners logo, it's probably the same plant. Uh, it just means that they get it from a different grower. And that can make a big difference because uh, I, we know that our Proven Winners grower is very consistent with the quality. Uh, if we were getting it from some other grower or a third party, we might not know the quality of the plant that's coming in. We've been very lucky. We've carried the Senecio Angel Wings in the past and absolutely loved it. So we're, we're pretty confident that this one's going to do great. Uh, now, we are also carrying our Super Tunia Vistas in this larger two-quart size. So that can be a little bit harder for planting in here. It does kind of let your brain know that these are going to be vigorous plants. So you've got to keep that in mind. They do recommend a 16-inch pot. So this one here is a 16-inch. I think this darker color is going to look really nice with that white petunia and the hoopla so i think that's gonna be nice but this is an example these are both 16 inch containers but when you look at it you know this one's long and narrow they hold a similar amount of dirt but this one definitely is more squat and doesn't hold quite as much when i did the scoops i could tell that this one is a little bit uh holds a little bit less soil in the end it's not that big deal but if this was an even more shallow one i'd be very concerned i would not be putting super tunias in there so let me get to the next one Okay, so I think I'll start with my Senecio, and I'm going to put that over towards you just because it's going to be easier for me to plant the other ones, especially when I'm dealing with these very large pots. So I did have my Senecio on the shelf underneath here, so I have ended up with, and my uh, Hoopla, so there is plenty of uh, dirt on the leaves, but that'll come off later. It'll outgrow that. So let's get this in here, and you can see it's got this really beautiful velvety rubbery type of leaf it's more of a succulent and it does like nice warm sun it can handle direct sun hot sun it's a heat lover actually but it can do well i see it in ireland as well and they don't get the heat at all so it's one of those plants and it's actually perennial there too uh, so it's one of those plants that can manage a lot of different things the hoopla vivid orchid this one the color is so good on this it's a really vibrant Kind of magenta type of color and then it has a white rim on it and that white rim is perfect every time like on every flower every flower is perfect on that one and there's a lot of bi colors out there where they're very inconsistent it can be a little annoying uh when you're you know picturing it being one way and uh you know depending on temperature the white might be more or the pink might be more that's very common with bi colors uh, but with this one i i didn't notice much variation at all and i saw it in a, quite a few trial gardens last year so i'm pretty excited about this one so you can see i'm really a little bit tight already with this but i'm not too worried about it uh because i know that these plants can grow downwards and i also know that the plants match in vigor and because they match in vigor, they're going to be able to kind of duke it out with each other. If I had, say, these here with a plant like that Terenia, even though the Terenia won't like the sun the way these would, uh, it, these would swallow up that, that plant. Also, like if I even put it with just like more of one of the begonias, like a Selenia begonia or a nonstop begonia, uh, if that begonia isn't established, I could end up with that begonia getting swallowed up by those supertunias. So we always have to be aware of that when we're putting them in. And it's hard to imagine that sometimes when you have them in just the little the little cups, you know, when they're this size and you're putting them in, you don't always remember that, you know, this one's going to get 32 inches or 24 inches wide and this one's going to stay more, you know, eight inches. It, it can be a little tricky. So uh, I'm going to 
tidy these up a little later, but I'm looking forward to this one a lot. Now, with the Super Tunias, I tend to say less is a little bit more. And that's one thing I did notice with some of their recipes, especially the ones with like the Super Tunia Vistas, they put a lot of plants in them. Some of them have like five Super Tunias in like a 12 inch pot. Uh, Super Tunia Vistas are very aggressive. I don't usually like to put that many in. It's just too much to try to take care of for me. Uh, but they're also made so that are designed so that they're going to look great and say four weeks you're going to have this perfect beautiful container but once you get past say the six or eight week mark sometimes they get so big and they're fighting each other so much and trying to keep them water can be a little bit harder uh, so sometimes you have to consider that too like are these plants going to be so aggressive and that by august it's going to be very hard for me to keep them watered are they going to start you know fighting with each other am i going to have to maybe trim them back uh, so that's something to take into consideration. So with, especially the more vigorous plants. So that would be like the Superbina, the Supertunias, uh, the, their Lantanas. Those, I wouldn't mind going a little bit bigger with the pot size than what they recommend with each of those. You're safe doing that. And I think you'll be happier. It's gonna be easier to take care of. Those plants are gonna have that little bit more room and they're gonna look really great. Sorry, I've got dirt and I've got rice hulls all over this plant, but it's a really beautiful one. This Senesio Angel Wings does get a little bigger. It's not super tall, but it's a nice, nice addition. So this is this is gonna be a beautiful white and then magenta purple in here. This hoopla is very vigorous as well. So it, it has huge flowers and it gets, it's not a, su uh, a, a Vista, a Supertunia Vista, but it's really close. So already some of them that we planted up are just blankets already, just covering pots hanging down, they're doing a really good job. So these uh, hooplas are, it's an impressive plant. So this next recipe is called Grand Teton, and I'm actually replacing every plant in here, uh, but only because they call for the queen tut, but I don't have the queen tut, I only have prince tut. So prince tut is a little bit bigger than that. And I've learned from growing the prince tut and the king tut, they tend to take up a lot of space in a pot. They have really established roots and they really fill in and they can push out a lot of plants. Like I've stopped putting it with, you know, some of the smaller caliber coas and any of the small plants because they tend to overtake them. So the difference in size on these, so these get 18 to 30 inches tall. Spacing is 18 inches. Meanwhile, when you're looking at the queen tot, 18 to 24. So you're looking at up to a foot difference. So this is going to get another foot. So the queen tut would stay more the size that you see here. Uh, so that's something to uh, keep in mind. I am putting a more, uh, a much larger plant in or somewhat larger. And it has a different habit. The queen tut has these beautiful palms on it that just kind of spark, sparkle out. They look like a firework. These here have more of that kind of broom or brush type of look to it. And you can see they can as they get bigger, they just really take off. And it's it's a really nice, well-behaved one. The King Tut can be enormous. So the Prince Tut is a really nice one, especially for around the house, just because uh, it, you don't have to worry about it, you know, just really being a, a beast in the yard, much more uh, well-behaved than the King. Uh, I don't know how, if you're, how much I'm cutting off here. So I'm substituting the Queen Tut with the Prince Tut. Then the other, Kind of key plant in here is a coleus and they recommend the color blaze golden dreams i don't have that one i do have a main street venice beach that looks very similar as far as leaf color goes the main street series is a little bit more compact but those still get close to they're more like a, a 20 it says 24 i think on the tag 24 inches but i definitely see them get more in that 32 inch size but the color blaze tend to get a little bit bigger than that so i have a a decision to make. I need to decide, do I want to use the Color Blaze Albrighto? So this one here is just starting to show some of its color. So you're seeing it has that beautiful golden rim. It's going to get a little more orange, a little bit more pink and peach in there. Lots of colors on this Color Blaze. It's one of my favorite. It, it's been my favorite for the last two years. This has been m the one that stops me in my tracks every time. It's also the one that once the orange color shows up, you'll we'll walk into the greenhouse and we'll see one kind of over in the distance and it's the only thing your eye sees. You just stop right on it. It is stunning. But I think it's getting a run for its money from this one here. This is the Volcanica Solar Flare. And what I love about this one are these beautiful ripply edges on it. They're really stunning. And then it has 
that yellow margin on it that makes that ripple stand out really nicely than that burgundy with that pink stripe down the middle. Very, very different. And I think because I haven't grown this one before, I'm gonna try this one instead. Now it doesn't get quite as big uh, according to the tag. Although when I saw these growing at the trial gardens, they were pretty sizable. So I'm not too worried about this one not being able to hold its own. So let me see how they recommend taking, oh, see now, the other thing that they recommend, and they say you need an 18 to 24 inch pot. I'm close to that with this. Uh, and they recommend putting two Prince Tuts in here. And I'm just going to tell you, I have never had good luck with more than one Prince Tut, only because I find them to be very vigorous and they're water hogs. So I, I, I'm going to only put one in. I'm, maybe I'm crazy that way. I also know the size of this coleus, so I'm only going to put one of those in. And that leaves me with the final pl plant, which is the saff uh, Supertunia Saffron Finch, which is the new yellow from Proven Winners. And you can see beautiful color on it. But I'm going to use the Bee's Knees Petunia for a couple reasons. Number one, I have a couple more of these. Uh, when we did our pre-sales, the Supertunia Saffron Finch sold a little better than the bees knees so i know i have more bees knees available so i'm going to leave those saffron finch for customers but also these are the exact same plant they share a plant patent uh so this one's branded under the proven winters label this one is uh from plant uh ball uh, floral or ball plant floral, floral or something like that so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this i'm going to put this one here now i have to decide now am i going to do kind of two in front or do i do where i have one petunia on each side, which is a little bit like what I did with the other one. That could be a tough call because if I do it this way, I'm creating kind of a, a slope, a cascade down, which can be very, very nice. It's also going to make it, you know, fill out very nice. I have a feeling maybe what I should do is those kind of stick to my little, you know, corners type of thing and work it that way. I think that's what I'm going to do because I'd like to have more of that yellow petunia hanging down in front of this pot because this is a really beautiful one for doing that cascading. So, because it's a good mounding and, and uh, trailing variety. So let's get these in here as well. So I'll put the two big ones in first. Now, let's see how my coleus have rooted. So I always have to be really careful when we're planting this early in the season, because in a couple of weeks, these are gonna have really heavy duty roots. So we've got roots all the way to the bottom. Uh, in a couple of weeks, they're going to be much more established. And so it, you can be a little rougher with them. But right now I want to keep these as intact as possible. And of course, I'm working on a high table for this size of pot, but it's going to work out. Yeah, I'm loving the leaf on this. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I think I'm happy with my choice. No, I am happy with my choice. And I would have been very happy with the Albrito too, because that is a fantastic coleus. Like I said, that one has been, for two years running, my very favorite coleus. So, come on, bees knees. There we go. So, this one might, you know, look a little bare to you when I finish, but don't worry. When you see it next time, it'll be a completely different beast. It'll look very, very different than it does now. So... Man, this one's really hanging on to the pot. There we go. So, let's get this one down there. Perfection. So take a look at that. So you can see we've got this beautiful color here. This yellow is going to be fantastic. This one is made for containers. It'll look great in the landscape as well, but every container we had it in last year, it was just a show off. And I, when you look at these, you can see the difference between, so this is a new bloom, and then this is how they will kind of fade over time. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, it's not a bad fade. It's actually quite attractive because the throat stays dark and you get more of a butter color on the outside and that beautiful yellow inside it's it's a fantastic petunia um this one is up there with among my favorites because uh we don't see very many good yellows in petunias although uh, they're getting a lot more yellow so i think they're those are ones to watch uh but this one definitely it has the growth habit the flower coverage and it it really does fill in nice so you get like this beautiful yellow cloud going so let me get the rest of the soil in here
So here's the finished product. Looks pretty good, but they are going to improve significantly over the next couple of weeks as they take root and then really start to overflow these pots. So what you see now is nothing compared to what's going to be down the road. So I will do a follow-up video. I'm planning to do that probably at the end of June. So that's a good reason for you to subscribe. So you get the alert when I put that video out. Uh, it's always fun to compare the before and after. So I'm going to get another one of these planted and this one and this one. So that way I'll have pairs. This one I think is a standalone. So I'm not going to worry about it. It's a pretty big pot as well. So I think this one's going to be just fine. Remember, if you're going to go through that Proven Winners library of recipes, it's a great resource for coming up with plants. It's quite extensive, so your brain might go numb after a little while, uh, but it is a good resource, and you don't have to rely entirely on Proven Winners plants. I think, it's, I think it's a really good way for you to introduce yourself to some of the different varieties that you might not know. So you might find a plant other than like Petunia, Calabracoa, or Verbena, or begonia. Like you'll find something new if you start looking through there that you're going to want to try. So I think it's a good resource to have uh, and you don't you have to commit to those proven winter plants. But if you are going to switch from proven winter plants, I would recommend checking the vigor or if you have a whole bunch of different plants, checking the vigor of the, you know, so you're looking at the relationship of each of those plants because you don't want a high vigor plant with a low vigor plant because the high vigor plant means Bigger means I am going to eat anything smaller than me. Uh, sometimes you can get a medium vigor plant to do okay with a high vigor, or like we did with this Terenia, we put two of them in there and the two of them should be able to hold their own against the other ones. And especially because they're shade lovers, so they're not going to be fighting for sunlight. They're going to be trailing past the other plants. At least that's the plan. So we're going to see. We'll know in a couple of weeks exactly how that goes. So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, and definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Before I sign off, I want to mention that I did put some time release fertilizer into each container, and I also went through and trimmed all the petunias and calabracoa. I wanted to just tidy them up so that they'll be able to branch out a little bit more. So took care of that now, so I'll have better containers later on.